Howdy folks, my name is Lanceo90 and welcome back to my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead version point F. In the last video we talked about all the positive traits in extreme detail and talked about which ones are the best, which ones are the worst. Let's move on to skills. Okay, so these change a lot, so let me read through these on my own and then I'm going to explain what they are. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know why they changed the names of this stuff because most of it does just do the same thing that it used to. That said, I don't know exactly what applied science means. It's kind of vague what it says up there, so I'm just, we're just going to pretend like it's not there and figure it out later. Bows, archery skill can be nice because it can allow you to unlock like a short bow right away. And then a short bow would be one of your best ways to have a infinite source of ammo because there's lots of wood everywhere, obviously. Easy to make ammo, easy to make a bow. It's a silent weapon, so I'm going to track all the zombies around you. So I think we will put a point into that. And you can see, to put a point into this, I just press right on the arrow keys, by the way. And uh, left to take it away. But by putting one point in, I get two points out. That's what I was saying before. But then after that, one point to go up once. And then... Once it's at level three, it takes two points to get one point out of it so there you go so we're going to take archery because that's pretty good athletics is swimming this used to be called swimming it says it only affects swimming i don't know why they changed it to athletics <laughs> it's swimming um a point in bashing weapons very nice because some of your very early weapons are going to be bashing weapons they're pretty there's actually some pretty good ones you can build right off the bat and uh having a point in there is going to be pretty good it's just going to make it so we can actually fight at the start. Because at the start, if you don't have any kind of melee ability, even if you have like a good melee weapon, uh, it's hard to even beat like a single zombie now these days. The game got so much harder. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Computers makes it so you can... Uh, it's mostly used for hacking. Um, I don't think there's any crafting stuff that really involves computers that much. Uh, I'm not too worried about it right now. We can find books that will take it up later. Cutting weapons is like bashing weapons, but for cutting weapons, we're not going to worry about it. Devices is security systems. I don't, I don't know what the difference between that and the computer is. Maybe setting up, I guess, like disabling traps, maybe. And there used to be no skill for lock picking. I guess this is lock picking now. It's a new one. I don't really know what it does. I'm not too worried about it. Dodging. A point in this at the start is pretty good. And by A point, I obviously mean two levels of it. It's your ability to dodge incoming threats. This is pretty good to have at the start just so we can dodge zombie attacks a little bit more. It's going to make us better at combat. Electronics. Um, crafting electrical components. Might use a little bit of it once we're working on vehicles, but for the most part, we're going to want mechanics. Fabrication. I think we have to take a point into this to get some basic melee weapons and some basic, I think for basic arrows, we also need fabrication. So we're gonna do that. Food handling was called cooking before, and it is basically just cooking. Handguns, makes you better at handguns. Don't need it. Healthcare. I think this both unlocks some basic healthcare to get some points into this. And also your level is now highly effective on like how well you heal from your wounds the healing system is a lot different than it used to be it used to be bandages and stuff where just like health potions pretty much now it's now what you you bandage a wound you don't get any immediate health bonus but it increases your healing rate by a lot and if you don't do if you don't do anything you basically don't heal launchers grenade launchers and stuff <laughs> super not necessary Marksmanship is a general skill with any kind of weapon or any kind of ranged weapon, but it's not as effective as specific weapon bonus. We're not going to worry about it yet. We'll get it by just using our short bow once we make one. Mechanics is fantastic. I wish we had more points because if you could get this to level four, you can do almost anything you want to do with vehicles. Unfortunately, until you get to level four, there's not a whole lot you can do. <laughs> so we have to find some books to get this a little higher. Or I think you can take out like a bunch of seat belts and a bunch of uh, mirrors off the sides of vehicles to get this trained up. 
melee is like marksmanship, but for melee skills, where it generally affects all melee skills, but it's not as good as a specific one. Piercing weapons is like bashing weapons or slashing weapons, but it's another category. Um, piercing is, I think, considered the best because it can ignore a lot of armor, I think. But uh, I'm not too worried about it right now. I use a lot of bashing weapons. Rifles, it's another gun one. Shotguns, it's another gun one. Social makes it better to talk with other NPCs. Not necessary. Some machine guns. Survival. Survival's pretty good. I wish I actually had another point. We might have to go try to find another point somewhere. Um, oh, you know what? No, we don't. We don't want survival because we can forage through bushes really easily, and that trains up the survival skill extremely quick. So, yeah, we don't want that. Oh, tailoring. We need tailoring, though. Tailoring is incredible. This allows you to make armor and clothes and everything. It's been nerfed. It takes a lot longer to build clothes than it used to be. But it's still absolutely critical to everything we do. So we do have to get points for tailoring here. Absolutely critical. Throwing. I don't really care. We can train this by just picking up some rocks and throwing it if we cared. Unarmed combat. Not what we're doing. Vehicles is the driving skill. Again, it's one they've renamed for no reason because it says it's just driving. <laughs> um, not necessary. You can drive vehicles pretty successfully without even a point. It used to be it was a little rough driving at zero, at zero skill level, but they've made it so it's easier. So I'm not even sure why it's a skill anymore. <laughs> and then there's books that bring you to like level one driving like all over the place. All right, let's find some way to get... some way that we can unlock uh, tailoring here. Fast learner, fast reflexes. Fleet footed. I'm going to get rid of deft. It's only one point anyway. I don't think I don't think it's the most effective one. And we'll grab two points of tailoring. That's a pretty good skill spread, I would say. Look how little we have in all the ways that we've quote-unquote cheated. <laughs> I grabbed... I got eight more points out of traits than I should have been allowed to. And I gave myself six more points for this category. We're not doing specific pool, though. Our character is still kind of, like, mediocre. <laughs> like, if you saw these stats on a DD and d character sheet, it might not be the same as D&D &D exactly. But it's close. You'll be like, what the frick? This character's absolutely god awful. <laughs> and then skills, we just have two and a bunch of categories. Like, what? This character's horrible. Well, think of how bad it would be if we were playing at base settings. This game is unbelievably hard. Okay. Random name. Let's see, we can press in to scroll through these. Morris Watson seems kind of cool. We can change our gender with the ampersand or the uh, the at key. You can see all these options down here. Uh, we are going to press this exclamation mark to save this template. I'm going to call it basic because we're probably going to die, and then we're going to need that template to start a lot quicker. Uh, start location shouldn't matter. They should all just say, oh, actually, there's specific types of shelters now. I don't think it really matters which one we pick, but let's pick compartmentalized. It sounds kind of cool to me, doesn't it? There used to be only one type of shelter, but now there's more than one. And we're ready to go. We can change our blood type. Eight positive is what I am in real life. I guess I guess I could change these to be more exact to me just for fun. But there we go. And ready to start. I am going to go ahead and start this because... Just the way I need to organize the video. So let's get started. To start, we're going to press tab one more time and press yes. I think it would tell you if you don't if you have unspent points too. That loaded incredibly quick. <laughs> Normally that takes a little while. They must have improved the speed of it. Alright. So here we are in the world. This is our static NPC, so we must have had the static NPCs turned on. I'm glad. That's helpful. Or you know what? That's us. He's the static NPC because he has a gun. Martin Meeks, 
So you can see what the the cursor can do. The mouse can let you see what you're looking at. So you can put this over him. We see his name's Martin Meeks up on the top right. He's neutral to us. He's not aggressive. He has a wooden crossbow, and then you can see his clothes and stuff there. He has decent equipment, but not like really good stuff. We are in a we are in the evac shelter right now. These are the walls of the evac shelter. These here are windows with curtains on them. This in the corner is our computer. And you can see like, why is there a black space? And then the computer over here, the computer is producing light around it. It's very dim light. It says it's cloudy up in the top, right? But we can build around that at night, which is really nice. I think we build slow, but we can do it, which is helpful. And then this is just in the dark. We can't see it. If we were to open a window, which I'm probably going to do in just a moment, uh, it'll light up a lot more space out here and we'll be able to see outside. If we press M, it opens up the map. So as you can see, this is where we're at, where the ampersand sign is. Uh, purple ampersands will be NPCs, but the white one is us. This is a big old river that's running through the middle of the map. It's actually nice that it's nearby because that's a water source. Although there is more water in the forest now than there used to be. The lighter blue is uh, the river bank. Uh, this is a town down here called North Haven. And uh, these green greater than signs are houses. And obviously there's a lot of stuff here, so I'm not going to go through all of them. But this is a hardware store. This is an office. This is a parking lot. Grr, and that's the state skate park. Unfortunate. I was hoping that was a garage because garages are good. Ooh, military surpluses are pretty good. Can find some good stuff in there. I've actually found power armor in there. They might have fixed it so you can't anymore. We'll see. But yeah, hardware store is also pretty good. So I might want to hit that up sooner than later. And the green Fs are forests. And the light blue Fs are swamps. This is a FEMA camp. These things are really dangerous. There's like some pretty big zombies in there. As well as just being a lot of zombies in there. And we got a bridge across to the other side. And we have some craters over here. So, let's go ahead and pop open this window. I guess there's a window open down there. Because we see some light coming in. We'll uh, open this window. And now, you can see, I can see a lot more of the building, especially over here, I have really bright lighting. Over here, we have like a sepia tone zone. That is our memory of a location. Remember how I talked about the forgetful trait and how it used to be that didn't happen. If we were playing the original game, the way I used to play it, um, we wouldn't see anything in the sepia zones. Everything would just be black outside of what we could see <laughs> at all times even if we've been there before so that's why i don't worry about forgetful because it's already better than it used to be now we can see out here oh i better explain how i did that if i remember even how i did it <laughs> okay it's the x button <laughs> i'm just so out, uh, just do it out of habit so if we press the x button we get this view mode and then you can use the arrow keys to uh, look out further than you have by default. So out here, we can look out the window. We have this field of grass out here. There's a few bushes. There's some reeds in the water. And then that's, that's the star of the riverbank. And then eventually the river. Gotta press escape to get out of that. These are benches. These are difficult terrain. You can see in the top right, it says move cost 150, whereas on the other, on just like the wood floor, it's 100. So that's the stuff that if we had bad knees, it would take us longer to get over. And if we had parkour, it would be just as fast as a normal terrain. These are lockers. There's probably some survival stuff in them. These are countertops. They have some, they have some food and stuff inside them, probably. Oh, I didn't even talk about how I opened the dang window. Sorry. So much of this is just out of habit. So we came up to the window, it was closed. We pressed the O key for open and it opened automatically because it's the only option next to us. If we had two windows next to us, it would ask us which one we want to open. And then we use the arrow keys to find one. Or actually not the arrow keys, 
we would use our numpad. The numpad is very important in this game. I recommend if you don't have a numcad and you really want to play this game, you need to get one. Because the numpad allows you to walk on diagonals. So I have to turn num lock on. But without the numpad, you have to do like shifts arrow keys, I think, to get in certain directions, which would be you'd have to memorize that. And I don't know what they are off the top of my head. But with the numpad, you can walk on diagonals, no problem. Uh, if we want to close the window again, close the curtain so zombies don't see us. Although, if if they had been out here and I opened this, they would have so seen us automatically. That's kind of how that works. So closing it wouldn't help that much. But we can press C to close it. But that is the last place they saw us. So they will go to here, and we can exit out the back or something. But if we left this open, they might figure out that we went out the back, you know. It's kind of how that works, but we'll get into that more later. On the right-hand side here, we have our log here. You can see the things that I've done, opening and closing the door and stuff. It also tells you things that are happening. Um, this is just like flavor text of how it started. Uh, you think of randomly lighting a fire, but then the side against it tells us that our character is... He has pyromaniac cravings. We can press the V key to see what morale things are affecting him as you can see he has a minus two for craving a fire which is reducing our focus we'll talk more about that later also on the right hand side these are our health bars head torso left arm right arm left leg right leg these are what i said that if you had that one trait i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head uh, perceptive i think <clears throat> these would be numbers instead of health bars to tell you exactly how much you have. Sound is sound in your immediate area. It doesn't mean necessarily that it's specifically you, but like if a bomb goes off near you, it's gonna spike up really high too. That just tells you how much noise you're making, how likely zombies are to notice. Your mood is like a little smiley face indicator of what your mood is. <laughs> right now it's in a meh state. Focus is at 99%. Close to maximum skill gain, but not full. There's our stamina bar. Just walking around and stuff, we should be fine. But as we start fighting or if we start running, this is going to drain really quick. Speed. Whew. Speed, speed, speed. I told you I explained speed. Let's go ahead and explain speed. So the game is not real time. The game is paused right now. But every time we do anything at all, sort of, there's some... Like if I open up my inventory, we're going to talk about this later. I'm not going to explain how to open it up right now. Open up our inventory. That didn't take any time. But pulling something out of our inventory and dropping it on the ground would take time. Walking takes time. In fact, you can see right here how much time it's taking. It's taking 87 to walk on normal pavement. It's taking 152 to walk on regular. It's taking 127 to walk off of it. I can't tell you exactly what it means. Just know that things that have a bigger number on speed are bad. Our pocket knife has a boost per attack of 65. This is really fast. But if we had a, a two by four from bashing this apart, in fact, I'll do it. I might not be able to do it because I might need a rock, actually. <laughs> we'll explain that in the next episode. Anyway, if I had like a 2x4, it's probably going to be like 127 moves, which means it's slower. Big number means bad. Small number means good when it comes to speed. You always want to be as moving as quick as possible. Whenever you do stuff, everything else does stuff. So the zombies are going to are gonna move when you move. NPC is going to do stuff. He's not going to do anything because he doesn't see anything to do right now. But he's going to do stuff automatically once you do stuff automatically. So on and so forth. That's how this works. Um, a quick look at our stats here. There's other ways to view this, but this just, just this is helpful just to see if... Uh, like if you're in a lot of pain, these stats will drop. And so being able to see it up here kind of tells you like, oh, something's going on right now. Power, this is once you get CBMs installed, which are like bionics, the 
uh, cyberpunk stuff I was talking about. Safe means if safe mode is on or not. I'll talk about that later too. Uh, weary is new, <laughs> so I don't really, I can't explain this perfectly well. I also don't know what like weary, merry mouse and stuff is. This is all new. This is physical exhaustion. This isn't how sleepy you are. Sleep is down here somewhere. This is physical exhaustion. Like if you've been, if you run the mile at school before, you've been weary before, right? It's just your immediate physical weariness and you can like sit down and recover this quicker than you can go to sleep and recover from being tired. This is a very new thing. I don't know what it means. This tells you how stressful your activity is, I assume. Okay, here we have a bunch of things about our location. It says we're at the evac shelter. It tells us what the condition of the sky is. It's clear. This can be important. If it's sunny out, your character has trouble seeing. Unless you have sunglasses or something. Uh, the light is very dark because we're inside and the door's closed or the window's closed. But if we open the window, you can see that it now says it's bright. Date is the exact day and season that we're in. Time is the time of day, obviously. Wielding is what we're wielding. Right now, that's our fists. Style, this is where your martial arts style would be if you had one. This is our super zoomed out mini map, which kind of shows you a much larger idea of what's around you. Down here, we have a more localized mini map. Um, <clears throat> oh, by the way, it was the M key to open the map earlier. Press M to open that and escape to get out. Uh, pain. This is where the pain will start to appear if you're in pain. The bigger the number, the worse it is, obviously. Rest. This shows if you're tired or not. We're not tired or anything right now. Thirst tells you if you're thirsty or not. We're not thirsty yet. Hunger. We're not hungry. Heat is uh, how hot we are, obviously. And this is changed by what clothes you're wearing and what the temperature outside and stuff is. Weight, we're overweight. I don't think there's severe penalties for this, but if we go over this, it'll be pretty bad. Our weight should go down though, because we're surviving an apocalypse now. And sound is how much sound we're making. It's this one. Actually, I don't know what the difference between this one and this one is. I guess this is the sound we're making and this is the sound that's nearby. These uh, Northwest indicators and stuff, this is where Actually, I'm surprised he's not on here. Maybe he's too close. But any animal, any zombie, any person should show up next to any of these. And sometimes it can be weird and like glitch out. Like, it's possible that someone being in the southeast won't appear here. It'll appear down here. It can be weird sometimes. But that's the general direction they are. And then you can use X to go try to find them or use the mini map to try to see where they're at. That sort of stuff. I'm out of time for this video. I'm also, my voice hurts really bad. It's been a long time since I've done a tutorial series. But we're all out of time for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, remember to hit the like button. Keep the conversation going in the comments and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Until next time, I hope you have a good day.